Okay, so... So I'm back today. Um, it's um, August 30th, uh, 2019. And um, yesterday I got cut off. I came later to the to the beach, so it, it's been a really weird summer. Really windy, really cold, and rainy, and uh, and whatnot. So, so this is a continuation. Um, I finally remembered to get some post-its. I always forget to get post-its, which I think is the best thing when you are, um, you know, making notes, reading a book, because as I saw yesterday, I was not able to uh, locate none of the material. So, um, this is the first post that I did this morning in the, in the train. It's like an hour and a half uh, ride to, to get here. So, um, I separated this page because uh, it's page 336. And uh, because it, I, I always say that uh, rats can, can have uh, bunnies. A rat cannot give birth to a rabbit. So, and, and that's, that's the insanity of us thinking that this generation might be better than the other generations. And the other generations because they used to own slaves and, uh, you know, whatever. And now, you know, I guess they call it uh, progressive, progressism, progressism or... Uh, Incrementalism, I'm not really sure. You know, I didn't go to school for that. I didn't go to school at all, so. <laughs> but uh, he, he says something that is not similar at all, but is using animals and different animals. Uh, he drew an analogy to, to farm falls to make his point. It's impossible for a chicken to produce a duck egg. Chickens, chickens don't lay duck eggs, right? Even though they both belong to the same family of fall, the system in this country cannot produce freedom on African American. For, for an African American. And if ever a chicken did produce a duck egg, I'm quite sure you will say it was certainly a revolutionary egg. So I, I, I really like uh, that analogy. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, I say, to me, I see him as a Gemini. Uh, yes, he was very grounded because he was an earth science, he was a Taurus, May 19, but he was also able to go up in the air and see everything from above and into the future, and he was very, he was very always, um, you know, spot on. Um, So, I really wish I had the post-its, especially those long ones, I have to, I have to buy those, the, 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 the ones that they go, you can write a lot. But, um, so, so right now, um, well, what I wrote here from other pages, which I did not separate, um, what's about that, that the author, and he's not the only author that, um, asks if Malcolm X was suicidal. 
you know, he was not, uh, he had no uh, security um, checks at the door, at the Audubon Ballroom. Uh, he decided that <clears throat> in January 1965, a few weeks before he got killed. Um, so, and, and I mean, the way I see it, I really see that it was kind of like crazy for them to go into the Audubon Ballroom. So, he might have thought he was protected from being such a public space and surrounded by so many people. But it's New York City. We've seen many times people get killed in the subway and people just watching. People are getting stabbed and people just watching. That's very colonial. I think that's a direct line into, um, you know, slavery, chattel slavery, and how we all uh, was just uh, either dissociating or or was trying to, I mean, I compare a little bit to, to a household, you know, somebody might be getting whipped and, uh, you know, people, they, they don't really react, you know, as I said before, my mom used to whip me every day and sometimes she will get worse. Um, she would ask me to get naked and uh, put me on my knees in front of the, in the middle of the, in the middle of the patio. So, and uh, my, my uncles and my aunts, they will see that. It did not interfere, you know, so it's really ugly. Uh, I think that's one of the ugliest behaviors that we got. Um, but uh, it's complex because it's intergenerational trauma. Uh, you know, save myself, I'm gonna save myself and fuck everybody, which is uh, what capitalism creates. I think that's one of the purpose of capitalism to, um, to make everybody, you know, like, you know, pay no mind because you're gonna get yours. Keep your eyes on the prize, don't get sidetracked because you're gonna be successful. And they're talking about economic success, of course, you know. So the question about suicide, I don't, I don't think so. I, 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 what I really think it's just that you're burned out, you're burned out. I mean, I've been in this country for 30 years, undocumented and a couple of years ago, uh, you know, like three years ago, actually, I started to experience, you know, this burnout. I just wanted to get it over with and, um, you know, either go back home or, you know, they're going to have me arrested, arrested me right now, you know, and, and you just, um, but uh, I really don't know much about, I don't know where to look at this kind of trauma. But it's just, you get tired of, uh, you know, so he had already a whole year of escaping assassination attempts, had a whole year of uh, terrorism, which that's what it is, intimidation, uh, from uh, calling his house um, and saying hor horrible things to his wife and children. Uh, you know, they was not allowed to pick up the phone at one point uh, to like, you know, sometimes he had to call the police, you know, and uh, they would not come. And uh, there's an incident that, you know, right before he, he escaped, uh, you know, to do the African tour, uh, you know, he, he was like, he escaped like, you know, he came out of his house and and this man will come at him and he had to slam the door and or he would arrive to his house and then he tried to get out of the, of the car and uh, 
they will come out of the out of the the bushes, whatever, and he had to run in the car. It was uh, extremely traumatic, extremely traumatic to have that. Um, so no, I don't believe uh, the suicidal. I just believe that he did not have any mental health uh, care treatment. And uh, had he had mental health treatment, he would have realized that he was not um, regulating his emotions. At times he was suppressing and at times he will let him go because that's just the way emotions work out, right? You suppress them and, um, you know, when you least expect it, you know, there's some passages here that, that he will start talking about stuff, some stuff, you know, like, and it, it kind of feel like kind of odd because he was depressed, but, uh, but that's just the way it is when we don't learn to regulate our emotions. This is very important for every parent to um, to teach your children because I've been for years in therapy and, um, and classes of emotional regulation and whatnot so it is um, it is like um, I think one of the most important skills you can teach your children how to allow them to be the, the, their emotions without, you know, overtaking them or without them uh, trying to suppress them. I'm getting tired, sorry. So, um, so well, I, I just wrote fast over here. Yes, it was professional assassins, and I'm going to get back and forth in the book because I'm not good at it. So it was professional assassins uh, as uh, witness accounts uh, revealed um, there was at least two of the assassins who was very, very skillful at escaping the, the murder scene, the Audubon ballroom. Um, there was one that was overweight, you know, and and he tried to go back through the door uh, to thinking that he was gonna, um, uh, what's it called, um, with the confusion, he was gonna be able to escape. So, but, um, so yeah, definitely, I mean, if anybody with that debate, uh, this was professional assassins, this was, um, infiltrated uh, people in the nation of Islam who actually uh, they, they try you know um, you know gauging and they was like they was agitating uh, the nation of Islam to get uh, revenge they was like uh, purposely you know that's 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 what I deduct from the whole book uh, purposely, they was like asking, you know, like, you know, oh, Malcolm X was a hypocrite, um, horrendous, you know, he deserved punishment, and asking all the members of the NOI, you know, what you think should be the punishment for uh, the Honorable Malcolm X. And if they said, um, well, uh, capital debt, capital punishment. You know, uh, then you know that's how they got to recruit a couple of guys into into this. But he was a moving target. He was a moving target, and um, you know he, he was very strategic. It was like, well, I don't want to get a, get too much ahead of myself, but definitely everything point out. Um, especially there's a couple of um, assassins. Who, who throughout his, their lives they got uh, preferential treatment because you know they continue to get in trouble. Yes, they was informants and and then they was uh, in, even more than informants in this case, you know, assassins. You know, so so they got they got uh, like one of them he got his personal lawyers. I'm talking about Newark, New Jersey. 
and uh, you know got exonerated and and whatnot and uh, and it talk about the book how he actually almost escaped hadn't it been had it not been because of the internet that people started putting things together and found out you know he he was truly he reinvented himself he got married had children and even further even further he wasn't um, <clears throat> endorsing Cory Booker just a few years ago he did a commercial uh, spot whatever they, 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 they call him endorsing uh, Cory Booker who is running right now for president of the United States he's a senator now but at that time he was running for mayor uh, of um, Newark New Jersey so um, so that 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 that's insane you know that's how how shameless they is you know it's like uh, if you ever heard about the Challenger explosion in Florida which it was a spaceship who was supposed to go out, out of space and exploded in front of everybody on television. Well, you know, people been showing videos, people been showing uh, pictures of all of them. They're still alive, and you know, it's a big lie about you. You know, it's. Uh, I really believe that sometimes they practice to you know to see how how bold they can get with their lies. So yeah, it was very definitely. Uh, outrageous lies because these motherfuckers they went on with their lives like nothing happened because they was protected by the government as a matter of fact there was one uh, uh, account where uh, one of the assassins got trapped at the Audubon ballroom because he got shot in the leg couldn't walk so so he managed to somehow um, you, you, you know I don't know he got an agreement whatever so somebody, you, 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 you know, the, I mean, uh, not somebody, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting confused. No, the, the NYPD came into the Audubon ballroom and took him out. And, and witness saw that, that he was not taken to the hospital right there. Columbia Presbyterian on 168th Street. He was not. They kept driving. They kept driving. So, I mean, it, it was like infuriating infuriating the police arrived like 25 minutes after the assassination it was very 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 sloppy they did not secure uh, the, the the scene as a matter of fact in, in uh, there was another event scheduled for the same day there was a, there was an event scheduled for the same day in, in and uh, and they went on they say the show must go on, so so they they went on and um, and I don't know if it's true because you know I, I mean uh, like I told you in the last video I don't know it got cut off so I don't know how much I really believe that this book was tampered with by the government so I don't know if that actually happened or not uh, some but you can find out. They were scheduled on an event in that afternoon, so they just mopped the floor, cleaned the blood, and they had the event. So, as if nothing changed, there was not, uh, even when they say it is very common to. <laughs> I love these creatures, the little flies. Uh, even when it's very common, the police secure uh, locations you know murder scenes for days sometimes you know uh, this case it was like it was shameless shameless evidence you know uh, all they care about the police was that people was not gonna find out find out right there uh, about their agents rescuing their agents and securing the identity of the agents i think that's the only priority that was because uh, the police never came uh there was police but they was outside 
and, and uh, people was enraged. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of stuff that that we really don't know. Uh, there was no social media. Had there been social media, you know, there would have been some fantastic riots right there. You know, some really, you know, shut, shutting shit down. You know, so. One of these uh, NYPD uh, detect uh, officers, whatever they're called, his name is Gary Falchner, Falcher, Jerry Falcher, and uh, I don't know if you know for whatever the reason, um, you know why the the writer don't say, you know that was ridiculous because this character. According to this book, it was very innocent. It was very innocent because um, he was one of the ones who was listening to the to the calls. He was listening to the calls um, and recording. So he said it was very kind of like a difficult, you know, back then to wiretap, you know, the phones. And, I mean, to listen to the phones because you you had to pick up the phone at the same time that it was ringing. So, so he got very skillful at that. So he cannot make any noise, and um, you know. But uh, I mean, he he said that he was actually uh, telling his 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 boss that you know you know this guy is exactly what you want. He's doing exactly what you want uh, you know African Americans to do. He wanna take African Americans out of welfare. He wanna he wanna make your life a lot easier by making a you know giving them jobs and stuff so they won't have to be criminals. <laughs> so so this is why this is why you know I, I I really feel really weird about about this book. You know the fact that. Um, I really think that that it was totally tampered. Um, it was it was uh, it was a slap in the face from the NYPD or the FBI. This book because um, oh, it was, it was so much so much um, shameless. Um, mockery mockery i think that's that's what i think so 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 this guy he seemed very very innocent that you know he tried to tell him you know this this is a guy we should be supporting which actually was also the way uh that that day uh the honorable malcolm s was introduced the day that he was assassinated at the event, he was assassinated at the rally, at the Audubon Ballroom, he was introduced that way. This is, this is a man that we all should be supporting. This is a man we have to treasure because, you know, there's no other one who loves us the way he do, you know. I mean, I'm, in, you know, embellishing. Also, there was an incident, um, you know, which to me, it, 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 it's every time these incidents got in the book, I feel like, you know, how many, many, many more there was that they are not in the book. When he arrived into L.A. Um, for the trial of, uh, of one of the, the NOI members, it was a couple of NOI, NOI members who was uh, uh, beat up um, by the LAPD so so there was a trial going on you know for years and uh, it turned out the date was right you know the few days before he actually took off for his African tour the last African tour so uh, they don't say much. He don't say much except uh, he was told uh, 
at gunpoint. He was held at gunpoint and uh, and I think he was beat up. He was beat up. Malcolm X was beat up, held at gunpoint uh, to prevent him from going to the trial. Uh, and um, and he was very. Uh, he was uh, supposed to. He was just supervising. But he was like, you know, making comments to the 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 press, and uh, he was sitting in the audience, and uh, you know, you you gotta read that part. I mean, basically, you read the last uh, part of the book, uh, which is the one that that is is insane, insane. You cannot believe anybody live like this. You cannot believe nobody live like this. You know, escaping death over and over and him fooling it, you know, sneaking in and out. You know, it was a moving target. He was a moving target. So, so this is like, you know, what, the, the, the note that I that I put in here all right so this one um, so um, oh it's right here I left on uh, So this is two days before he left for the African tour, who took most of um, of the the summer and the fall. He was gone for months, for months. You know, uh, and uh, it was a magical time. It was a magical time. It was like if the his ancestors was leading him his his few weeks it was like his last few weeks it was like he was being guided magical you know it was very magical you know he 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 was having lunch with dignitaries he was like you know It's very emotional because they didn't give a fuck. It was saving their lives. It was saving all our lives. Didn't matter. Didn't matter to a lot of people. I'm not talking about, of course, the FBI, you know, NYPD, no. I'm talking about everybody. How, how it just, the press got him to was creating this well they've been already creating that image but it was escalating the last few weeks uh, a month they was escalating the satanization so so this was happening at the same time you know they learned <clears throat> Three volunteers in Mississippi disappeared. So he was planning a rally before uh, the African tour. Uh, basically, in the book, that's all they tell you. You know, they had one meeting. They were the, the beginning of the planning of the African tour, and then he was gone. He was gone. That was it. You know, but let, let, me t let me read you a couple of uh, paragraphs. Um, so, Dr. King was still in jail in San Agustin, I, I believe, you know, in and out of jail. Imagine just, just those times that we take for granted today, you know. So...
and uh, early on that on the morning of June June 30th this is June 30th uh, 1964 uh, the Honorable Malcolm X sent Dr. King a telegram expressing his concern about racist attacks against civil rights um, demonstrators in San Agustin. He indicated that if federal authorities were not willing to protect civil rights workers, then he was prepared to deploy his people in the South to organize self-defense units capable of fighting the Ku Klux Klan. To reporters, he he characterized these groups as guerrilla, say guerrilla, guerrilla squads. The clan elements in the South are well known. We believe that whenever they strike against African Americans, the African Americans have a chance to strike back. So imagine if Dr. King had said, okay, so tell me more about these squads you are sending down south. And there's no doubt in my mind that the power of uh, convocatory, I don't know how to say that in English, of uh, the Honorable Malcolm X, he would have rallied 